Now this is the worst thing that you could find when you're looking at a PCGS submission because if the coin has an added mint mark or it's not genuine, they'll put it in one of these, which means they won't put it in a holder because they can't really say that the coin is authentic fully. Hey guys, this is Drew the Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we submitted a fake coin to PCGS. What does that mean? Well, we'll let you know in just a moment. So about four or five months ago, we were approached by one of our clients and he said, hey, could you submit these raw coins to PCGS? And so we actually sat down with him and we said, hey, this is what we think each one of your coins will grade if we send it to PCGS. And one of those coins was a 1916D Mercury Dime, which is the key date of the series. And the reason why we call this coin fake is because this coin was a 1916 Philly that someone added a mint mark to the coin. And so we told them right away, we said, hey, this coin is an added mint mark and we wouldn't really want to submit it because it'd be a waste of money. And then he talked to the person that he bought it from, which was an upstanding, I guess, dealer somewhere else. And the guy said, well, just ship it back to us and I'll explain to your client why the coin is legitimate. And so I just said, you know what, on the house, we're going to send it to PCGS today and we're going to show you guys, did it come back genuine or did it come back with an added mint mark? And we're also going to show you guys the rest of the coins that we submitted from our own personal stash and give you our thoughts on those grades also. So the first coins we're going to show you guys in this PCGS submission is our coins. These coins we ended up buying from albums. We ended up buying from a client that wanted to sell us some walkers out of a book and we just got the grades back today. Some are good, some are bad, but overall what I would say is that each one of these coins are overgraded by at least a point. I think that PCGS is grading a little bit too generously right now, especially with these coins that I saw, but I would love to know what your guys' thoughts are down below when we start to open this box and uh, let's just jump right into it. The first coin, we're going off with a great start here. 1938 Philly Walker. And it came back with a wheel mark. I don't know where the wheel mark is and it probably will take me too much time to find it, but this is uh, I think one of the only details coins that we submitted, so we're doing okay. Then we have this 1939D Walker. Great luster. A bit ticky out in the fields, as most walkers are. And uh, I think they're making up for ticks in the, in the fields with great luster. These coins are nice, original, and definitely unmessed with. And uh, yeah, nice coin. Then we have this 1937S Walker. It's great mid state 64. Nothing impairing the luster. And uh, a little bit tougher coin for a short set. And uh, yeah, very happy with that. Then we have the big kahuna here, this 1938 Denver. Has like a proof-likey look to the obverse of the coin. Great looking fields. Luster is all there for sure. Has a little bit of like polish lines out to the left and the right and a few hidden ticky marks out in the field. It probably would have maybe done a seven if uh, those ticky marks were not out there. Then we have this 1936 Denver, Great Mint State 64. And, uh, you know, a lot of these coins are just a little bit of a better date. It's good to get them submitted because sometimes you can get some extra value if they're not uh, details coins like that 38 Philly. Then we have another 66 Walker. This one's a 1939 Philly. And uh, overall, very clean fields, great luster. Probably, you know, maybe a 66 plus, maybe a little bit better than that if it was show graded. But this coin came back 66 and that's... Perfectly fine with us. Then we have a few Morgan dollars to show you guys. The first one is this 85cc. Great flashy luster to the coin. Uh, came back 63 just because of how many, you know, subtle hits are out in the fields. And, uh, you know, I probably could see this going at 64 at NGC, but once again, not a big issue for us. Then we have this 1897 Philly, Great Men's State 65. So a more common date, but we wanted to see what it would come back as. I personally thought this coin was a 64. You could see kind of where the softness is on the hair and there's a big hit right on the cheek. I don't think this coin really is a great 65, but they did grade it a 65, so we'll just run with it. Then we have this 1903 O in Min State 64. 
So when we sat down with the client to buy this coin raw, he said he cracked it out of a Mint State 65 NGC holder. And I said, well, I don't think I can get into the 65 holder again. And lo and behold, it came back into 64 holders. So exactly what I thought. Then we have this 1881 CC, a little bit suppressed luster. And, you know, there's just those little bit of hits and softness on the cheek. And, uh, you know, I agree with the grade. I think the luster should be a lot nicer if it was closer to a gem. And I think 63 overall is fair. Then we have this 1897S Morgan dollar. You can see a big hit right there out in the field. Great luster, though, as San Francisco Mint coins look. And uh, this coin, you know, just happy with the way it came out. Great true views and uh, a decent coin to offer somebody that's looking for one for their set. Then we have the 64 1880cc. So if you take a look kind of at the cheek once again, a little bit stronger, less issues there. There was a bigger coin roll on the cheek on the other coin. And this one doesn't have that coin roll, but the luster isn't crazy once again. And then the last coin I want to show you guys from our stuff is this 95.0. It's great AU55, great remaining luster, great details. I do think this coin is a little bit strong for the grade. I think the luster is just super suppressed. And uh, you know, I think it's probably a 53 by today's standards. But once again, it'll be okay. We'll take the 55 and we'll keep moving. So the first coin is 1922D, weak D. And it is great VG10. This coin in the flip or in the 2x2 two two cardboard was labeled 22 plane. So a 22 plane versus a 22 weak D is a dramatic change in value. So when we were letting the client know, we said, hey, this coin is a weak D. It's not a plane. It's not a no D. And um, unfortunately, that drops off the value tremendously. But he was told this was a no D. And... We got back a week D. The next two coins I want to talk to you guys about is a 37D three-legged buffalo. This one came back VF25. Very happy for the client. It's what's to be expected from the coin that he sent to us and uh, from what the coin shop sold him. And then we have this 13S buffalo. It came back details grade. Then we were talking to him about the two key date quarters that he wanted submitted. We told him that this 32S and 32D would come back with cleaning details grade and they came back with cleaning and a details grade. So we were right, unfortunately, and uh, that's the way it goes. Now this is the worst thing that you could find when you're looking at a PCGS submission because if the coin has an added mint mark or it's not genuine, they'll put it in one of these, which means they won't put it in a holder because they can't really say that the coin is authentic fully. So we'll pull this out here. And this is a 1916D, but it's actually a 1916 Philly, and it has an added mint mark. And I'm going to put up a photo right now of what a mint mark should look like, and then I'll put up a photo of what this mint mark does look like, because there's supposed to be a nice little triangle in the center of the D when you're looking at the 1916D that's genuine. And this one just looks flat, and it looks added, and it doesn't really have a good look to it. Um, like I said, I'll add more photos while the video is rolling, but this one definitely is too funky and there's a lot of things wrong with it. So the next two coins we're going to talk to you guys about are these 1840 large scent. It's created XF45. It has some good remaining luster the coin. That's ultimately what we thought this coin would grade out at. I think this coin was sold to a client on whatnot and I think it was projected to be AU and it came back XF. So there's a big issue i guess with selling raw coins for us to clients is because we can't necessarily back it up fully and there's a lot of dealers out there that'll sell you a raw coin and it come back it comes back details and then you lose half the value of the coin when you go to sell it and so that's why we kind of stick to graded coins when we're looking at them and it just it's just more palatable easier and gives you guys more confidence uh we were taking a look at this 1828 um and it's, uh, it came back AU details scratched. We ended up telling the client that it would come back scratched. I can put the true view up right now of what the scratch is. It basically is coming in from the field and going through the eye. And then on the back, there's a few light scratches from, I don't know, someone graffitiing it right over the one cent. 
And so there's not only scratches on the reverse, but there's also scratches on the obverse. And this was also bought from a whatnot sale and there was no mention of any scratches on the coin. And so once again, I can understand why people lose faith sometimes in coin collecting. Then we submitted two other coins for uh, a friend of ours. This is a 32D uh, Washington Quarter. I recommended that he send the coin. I was kind of debating if it was environmental damage or not, but I felt like the coin had a good enough detail to send it and give it a shot. It came back 32D genuine, so the mint mark has not been added, and it's fully legit from there, but yeah, it sucks it came back XF details. And then uh, the other coin that we submitted for him was this 37D three-legged buffalo in VF30. Very wholesome, very nice and original, and uh, very happy that it came back the way that he wanted it to. And I think this coin would be great with a sticker. All right, here's some coins that we submitted for another friend of ours. So this is a 1937 Buffalo Nickel. So this one I think was in an NGC 64 CAC holder. It came back with machine damage one time, and then we submitted it again for him, and it came back with machine damage again. So uh, interesting. Then we have this 1922 Grant. It's graded AU58. Subtle wear. Good, decent luster. I think this coin's probably a 55 by today's standards, but I guess they thought that the wear was so insignificant that they felt it was a 58. Then we have a 1923 Peace Dollar, graded MS66. Flawless cheek on the obverse. Great strike. And it has just a few little subtle hits on the eagle, but definitely a nice coin for sure. Then we have this 1956 Type 2 Franklin Half Dollar. It's graded Proof 67 Plus Cameo. A common coin, but a nice grade and a nice cameo contrast on both sides and uh, definitely deserving of the grade. Then we have an 1860 seated half. It's graded um, Fair 2 by PCGS. He was going for a poor one on this coin, I'm sure, and uh, yep, didn't hit that, but okay, no worries. Then we have a 1920 Pilgrim. Great AU details. You can kind of see this like sheeny look to it. And how dark and uh, it's like someone over dipped this coin and cleaned it. And I, I do agree with uh, PCGS's grade. It should have full luster and this coin has been dipped out most certainly. Then we have this 1880 Philly Morgan Dollar. He was grading going for proof like on this coin and I uh, didn't end up getting proof like. And uh, yeah, they graded it at 64. A little bit of a better date. Let me know what you guys think of this coin down below. Then we have an 1886 Morgan dollar, and this one has a little bit of toning to it. And uh, yeah, came back 64, probably how it should be. And uh, interesting little character to the coin.